Okay, so now that we have our height map pretty much done here, what we can do is we're just going to do one last thing to kind of make sure our scale is correct with our height map. So right now it goes from it's pretty much black to white, but just to make sure, let's do it on final auto levels, just a little touch there. So uh, we now need to make this the correct scale and height. Um, so to do that, we're going to come up here and change this to uh, the scale here to what we think it should be. So let's put 30 centimeters and you'll see this is now pretty crazy. So what we're going to do is put a histogram range in, plug it into our height map output and then just bring our range down. Cool. So let's go a little bit lower, something like that. That looks about right. Excellent. So now we have the correct values for our height map. And that'll do for our height map for just now. So let's move on to the color. So sometimes I do roughness first, sometimes I do color first. Uh, it just kind of depends on uh, what I'm feeling like for this material. And I'd quite like to get some color down for this material. So let's get started on that. So we're going to start with the our, uh, dark color first. Um, so let's put a multi-directional warp down like this um, and then let's plug this guy into the into here and we're going to warp this dirt just to give it some sort of like extra undulation so extra undulation here will help us sort of get a good gradient map put, put down a tile sampler like this Put down grunge map. Let's choose grunge or two. Excellent. Let's bring the contrast down to zero and the brush. Let's land you around 0 0.6. Let's put a pattern input um, to two and then let's plug that in there and let's throw down another grunge and we'll go grunge or one. Bring the contrast down and put that to a bit. Uh, 0.6 again. Cool, and let's plug that one in. So with this tile sampler, let's make these uh, 15 and 15. Uh, so let's scroll down here to the scale section and we're going to give a little bit of scale random uh, in either direction. I'm going to scale it up quite high so to be 7.14 and then we're going to give it a little bit of scale random so 0 0.42 that should do that position random 2 point let's go land on 2 around about around about there and then we're going to go down to rotation random uh, and let's put you something like that and then we scroll down to color random and let's put you at about 0.6 excellent 0.62 and that's pretty much this done so let's just do our own multi-directional work with this one just to kind of mess this noise up a little bit Let's put uh, 12.05 and let's put this to chain and let's plug that in to this multi-directional warp. So we'll go from, let's see what this looks like. So just kind of gives us some additional, additional noise there for our dirt to give some interesting color. Um, and let's even up this up a little bit. So let's plug, put this up to 20. We can keep it on average in direction four, that's fine. Uh, and now, so I'm going to add a gradient node, a gradient map. And I'm just going to pick a bunch of colors. So I'll open up the gradient editor. And I'm just going to pick uh, a, 
bunch of colors. Something like that more. So I'm just going to choose from my reference that I have. You can just choose the same. You can you just pick and then you just drag along a segment of your reference. Okay, something like that. Um, let's just before we go into, we're actually going to swap these round because so just to give us a bit more, we're going to take this more than we're going to take this, but we're going to warp this one based on this. So let's actually just switch these round. Now we have some more sort of more undulation and different colors here. Just kind of cool. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is just gonna we're just gonna blend this with a little bit of noise, fast noise into a gradient map, and then we're gonna blend that down. A copy of three zero point three eight. So it looks like this, but we're going to introduce some color here. So what we're going to do is we're going to let's put a point here. We've got this point here. Let's put a point here, here and here. At this point here, we're going to make alpha out. We're going to make it so that it doesn't exist. Um, and then what's going to happen, you'll see what, what that does in a second. Uh, so let's just pick another couple of sort of like um, dark colors here. And we're going to just, yeah, just some more sort of browner values, some lighter values, a little bit of very variation within uh, this noise here. So if we click here, we go down to click uh, on this show checkerboard, you can see that it actually alphas out um, a lot of the information. So when we overlay it, and it looks like that. Whereas obviously before, let's just show you what it looked like before. A little bit of that. So, a little better. And it just gives us some, a little bit of sort of micro noise into our dirt color. And then lastly, let's just tone it all down a little bit to a uniform color. I'm going to pick in the value there from my reference and we can just use that. And let's bring that down. So let's do the same 0 0.3, a little bit more, run a bit there, 3 0 0.38 again. Excellent. So this is now going to be the color of our dart and we'll come back to that later and see if we need to make any changes to that. So let's just frame that off, dart color. And let's double click on our base material. Let's untick base color. This will go black and we can just plug that in to see what it looks like. Excellent. So that's our dirt color. So let's now work on our uh, stone color or rock color. What I'm going to do, so I'm going to take, let's take this value, uh, do a histogram scan. So let's grab the rocks before they go into the blend. Histogram scan, bring this up here. Uh, high position value. Uh, and we can leave the contrast as it is. And let's do a flood fill. Let's put uh, a flood fill to color. And we need a color to actually uh, put into it. So Let's get a gradient node and plug that in. And let's take this up here, put that there into here, and we'll take our colors from here. So gradient editor, uh, let's put down a few, uh, a few dots here. So let's start choosing the color.
And again, I'm just going to start choosing colors from my reference. Just whatever reference you have, um, feel free to just uh, pick from that reference. Or you can just directly pick off the screen here. And we get this look here. So if we go flood fold to color now, we can see that we actually have... It's just going to take samples off this color and give it solid whole colors to our uh, individual rocks. And let's change some of these values. So minus 0 0.04, get a little bit of H, um, hue random. A little bit of saturation random and a bit of lightness uh, luminosity random. And we get this kind of look here. Some of our stones up here, all different kind of shades and colors, which is really nice. Now what we're going to do is just add some lighter variation. So let's go blend. And we're going to go another gradient map. Just take it from the same uh, noise here. And I'm going to plug this in here and let's just check, choose some colors. Gradient editor and let's, let's pop some uh, colors down. So let's choose here, choose this one again, just picking from the reference, uh, whatever colors you need it to be. So I'm going for like a lighter, I'm going for some lighter colors here. Again, there, just pick, keep going with whatever. You don't need to have as many points as this if you don't want to. Excellent, so let's blend that in. And let's bring this down, something like that. And then let's put in a mask, so a histogram scan. Let's just bring it from our original so we only get some of the peaks of that. 0.29 bring up the contrast 0.73 that should be okay and then let's plug that in let's just have a wee look at what that's doing so far nope oh, so um, we, we have these black values so it doesn't make it look that good but we'll get rid of them once we start blending our dirt and our rocks together. So what I'm going to do now is just add a little bit more, a um, little bit more variation um, within these stones. So let's do a blend. And let's do another blend here. And put down two HSL nodes. Uh, so we can have a, add a bit of variation here. And then I'm going to use a histogram scan again from this noise up here just give it a little just introduce a little bit of the, of the noise and a bit of contrast so, and then let's do a histogram shift let's take it from back one so we're not using the exact same the exact same noise as before Plug that into our CM scan. There we go. We're starting to see some more information now. And let's plug that into our mask. And let's make some tweaks to this. So I want to give it a little bit of a push in the, the hue. Saturation. And the luminosity. The lightness. Um, and then we can leave that at the here. So we can take that on and off. And you can see the difference that that's making. That's just giving us some like some noise on our stones here. Just kind of cool. Now this one, we're going to use a curvature. So let's do a normal. We can just use a normal node for this because uh, we we don't need something uh, completely accurate. So let's just grab this, bring it up to our normal, and then put the pump up the normal to the render value of 10, use a curvature smooth, and then we're going to use a histogram scan. And then bring up the value 0 0.32, 0 0.33, 0 0.34, 0 0.35, 0 0.36, 0 0.37, 0 0.38, 0 0.39, 0 0.40, 0 0.41, 0 0.42, 0 0.43, 0 0.44, 0
0 0.9 And plug that in so we can see we're starting to get these sort of like little little peaks of the of our stone noise and then to see this let's change this up a little bit to 0 0.78 0 0.56 and 0, oh, 0 0.56 0 0.61 so we get some blue and brighter values you can see what that's doing there so that's kind of um, making some lighter areas where maybe stones will be scratched and sharpened a little bit. So let's reduce that though because it's pretty intense. 0 0.46. So let's just pull this back a little bit here and we're going to blend now blend our dirt in with our stones. So let's do a blend between the two of the stones. And then we're going to use the mask that comes out of the, uh, our blend node down here. And let's just pull that down there. Excellent. So now we're kind of starting to see something here. So now we're going to um, start to uh, color in some of our individual stones. We can take uh, from down here. So we have um, really useful kind of splatter data here, which is going to be really handy in, um, in using uh, these nodes now. So let's do a flood fill to color. Let's plug this in to our flood fill. And let's come up here. Let's drag this up. And we're going to blend, blend that in to here and let's give it a color to use so let's just choose a color I'm going for a bit of a darker color here let's plug that in you can see what that's going to do so let's plug that so that's pretty pretty crazy but let's tweak some things here so let's um bring down the saturation uh 0 0.06 just to get rid of any saturation there and then bring the lightness up. Let's see. Let's bring this up, see what that helps again. Nothing really there. Okay, so let's... So I want it to be quite dark and so desaturated. There we go. Let's just land on something like that. And we can just reduce the color a little bit if we want to. So it sits a bit nicer in the scene. Cool. So now we can move on to something else. So before, in fact, actually before we move on to something else, let's give a little bit more variation to these stones. So let's do a HSL. Plug that in there. Let's go to 7, 0 0.73, 0 0.83, and 0 0.49. Give us some nice blue colors. Plug this in here. And as a mask, what we're going to do is we're going to alpha split so we can get the alpha value out here again. So now we've got the alpha and the RGB separately. So what we can do is we can just plug that in there. You can see that these are all just going to be um, plugged in. So, so let's plug in um, a bit of noise to break up uh, the different stones that we want. Let's go back to this histogram scan. Um, and let's invert it. So invert the grayscale. Uh, and then let's subtract that from our stones. So let's subtract. And let's just invert that and plug that in instead. So we just get some of this kind of blue variation here. And then, of course, Let's bring this down 
quite quite a lot because we don't really want to be seeing it um, all that strong. We just want to see um, some slight variation there. Excellent. So let's move on to our next tile sampler. So we're going to just grab this uh, flood filter color because we're going to use the same situation down here, but we're going to grab uh, this splatter data instead. And let's change the uh, the color value. Let's go something like that. Just another kind of stone color. Um, and then let's change the HSL values. So let's go minus 0 0.4. And let's go minus 0 0.5. One for the HSL, the Q random, just to give us some like these subtle color changes, um, and then minus 0.3 just to desaturate it out a little bit, and 0 0.1. Let's make these a little bit brighter in the random, and then let's blend that down on top of this, and let's pull that over. So, let's see what we can do now. So let's now add, let's add our third one in because we can leave that. We can, if you'd like to, you can add another um, section of this sort of um, variation color, but we can just, let's just move on to the next stone um, scatter that we have. So let's do the same here. Pull that down to there. Plug that in. And see what we get. We're gonna use the same, let's just use the same color. Um, and we can change some just tweak these so it's not they're not completely the same. I'll leave that one. Let's go bring the hue down. Bring the saturation up in random and bring the luminosity down in random. And let's pull that over so we can see what it looks like. Cool. Now let's have a go at our plants. So let's kind of do something similar to what we did. So let's start with the grass here. So let's do, let's do a gradient map. Pull that out into the gradient there. And let's choose some colors. I'm just going to put down a few points here and just again, just choose some values from reference. So I've just got like a some sort of like a green succulent plant type reference here. I'm just going to take the colors from again, just take the colors from your own reference or you can take them straight off the screen here. that excellent so now just to reduce that uh, just to bring the variation down a little bit so just to have more of a uniform kind of grass color let's just bring that in um, and just choose this color and let's bring the amount of that down to 0 0.58 so we just kind of bring in that range down a little bit with another with this green color. Now let's bring one of these. So one of the flood filled color nodes. Uh, break the connections and plug this into the color and this into the, the splatter data into the flood fill. Uh, flood filled color. Maybe we're getting all these colors here. So let's see what values we can change. So. Let's bring here so we get some more red values. Fine, and then bring the saturation up. Something like this, maybe. Uh, and let's bring, make it everything a little bit lighter. Something like that. Excellent. And now let's blend that on top.
copy is fine. And then let's fill that over so we can start to see some of those green uh, green uh, blades of grass. Just kind of scattered around our, our ground here. Excellent. Now let's do the same for our uh, plants and our leaves. But again, I'm just going to, let's just, in fact, let's just duplicate these nodes here. Plug in the splatter data. Oh, wrong, wrong section. There we go. Let's change the H cell values here. So let's just go, let's zero these out. In fact, forgot to zero them out as well. From just because they're the, the same sentence as the stone sentence I duplicated it from. Uh, let's change this to 0 0.08. 0.26 and minus 0.19 and then we can pick a different green color if you want to but the same green color doesn't really matter as long as it's right for wherever you want to do it for uh, and then let's place these into our color line plug that in we're starting to see these are little green succulents now uh, coming through uh, and let's do the same thing again for the last time with our leaves um, let's just pull it up and let's see what if we want to change any of these values uh, and let's just, in fact, you know, let's just leave them the same as the plants because the leaf, the leaf comes from the little plants, right? So let's just leave them and put them into the graph. There we go. We can see these little individual leaves, um, leaves that were scattered around. Excellent. Great. Let's do keep going with that. So now all of our colors are, you know, blocked in. We can go ahead and start adding um, little bits of color variation uh, and whatnot. So let's go in and add, um, what I like to do is add in some dirt. I find using the dirt node um, can help just pull everything together. So let's use these guys. Pull these over. So we're going to put a curvature. Curvature smooth. Uh, and then I plug that into a curvature for the dirt. And our AO into the dirt as well. And let's edit some of these values to 0 0.65. Let's go leave that a little bit. And we'll up the grunge amount a little bit. Um, 0 0.3. Six and uh, let's mask out the edges. Excellent. So let's just add this in, see what it looks like. So let's blend our original dirt color that we've already made back here and use that as a mask. Pull that over. Cool. It just kind of brings everything together um, nice and evenly. Helps integrate everything else into the scene. Um, now we're gonna let's just fed, let's just add a rear note there and pull that over. Let's add some color variation. I like to do, I like to do three different colors of it, like of different variation in pretty much all my materials. Um, so let's add in three of these. something like that and I'm going to give each of these HSLs a different value so for this one let's make this 0 0.43 go for more of a purple color 
0.52 to up the saturation a little bit. 0.48. Make it a little bit darker. This HSL, let's make the 0.57, 0 0.58, and 0 0.46. So we get a nice orange color. But yeah, that's fine. And then this one. So, and then this one, let's go with values of 0 0.9, 0 0.98, 0 0.52, and 0 0.58. Um, and then to, to generate some masks from this, I'm just going to create a couple of like custom grungies using um, um, like method that we we used uh, back here. So let's just go over here to grunge. It's grunge 02. Uh, bring the contrast down and let's drop in grunge 01. Bring the contrast down and let's bring the brush pattern up so that we can sample these around, do a tile sampler. Pattern input to, uh, let's put this to two. And let's, in fact, yeah, let's put these to that. Let's, let's actually just take this rather than setting it up ourselves again. Uh, and let's change the random seed. Cool. So that's nice and simple. And let's just bring that there. And let's bring in another one. Change the random seed again. Let's move this one up here. Organization. And let's do a histogram scan. Zero point two six, zero point six eight, and we can do. Let's plug this one into this value. Do a multi-directional warp again on both. Let's do two of these. This first one. Let's put the strength to twelve point zero five. Change the chain, and then. Let's grab a histogram scan. Let's give a little bit more value there. Let's use this down here in the first one. And then for this middle one, let's bring something out of this guy. So let's do an invert. Oh, not an input. And Vert grayscale. Let's grab a histogram scan. Bring this up a little bit. So 0 0.43, 0 0.73, and then plug that in. And we see we've got three now, three different colors in our HSL and all coming through. So let's plug this right in the end crazy now all we have to do is sort of change these opacity values so it's to something we like and i've already settled on these values for myself but feel free to just move or play around with them and um, gauge what values that you need that work for your texture cool i'm mean, gonna have a bunch of color variation so let's pull that back and you can see the difference it's quite subtle but it just adds some nice color variation that you wouldn't see uh, normally Let's add uh, a frame around that, so uh, color variation. Let's add a frame around this. We'll call that just our color. Excellent. Uh, and feel free to or, like organize your graph 
a little bit better than I have here. So with the color, we're now just going to do a little bit of finishing up touches um, that I like to do. So let's take a gradient map, plug from our curvature in, and we're going to blend that on top of our color and soft light mode um, about 0.6, which is already there. 0.6 and then plug that in. What that does is it just helps accentuate everything a little bit, um, kind of brightens up your peaks and darkens your troughs a little bit um, without actually adding lighting information. Um, and that's going to basically wrap up for our color for the time being. And we can now move on to adding in uh, what I call a self shadowing element. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial. You can watch the next part by clicking the screen or the link in the description. If you would like to get your hands on these source files for this tutorial, then they can be found at the link in the description below as well.